Welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen. It's really two programs in one. This is a series that appeals to your creative side. Food that is sumptuous stuff. How could that be? Uh, this is a program about people who want to eat healthy and reduce calories. Actually, it's about food with an aromatic quality that fills the nose. Oh, sure. But it's also about keeping my arteries clean by reducing fat. But it doesn't mean a thing if the food isn't rich and colorful. Maximize the flavor. OK, but I must have healthy food that I can cook in minutes. I must minimize the risk. So welcome to Graham Care's Kitchen, where we get our heads together just for you. And indeed, welcome back once again. Look, tell you what, this is one of those programs that you wouldn't deny is full of vitality. I mean, if you eat this kind of food today for the rest of your life, you'll live forever. No, well, it's, it's strictly untrue, but you'll have a lot more life in your years rather than adding years to your life, okay? Come through, I'll show you. Um, I'm gonna do just a simple little technique in there at the beginning, which is what I call stack and the steam. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, but really, the most important thing that I want to say to you now is um, when you grew up, were you terrorized by mum who said, eat up your vegetables? I mean, you know, it's supposed to happen everywhere all over the world. And there's a, co a common sort of vision, I think, when I've spoken to people. They say, eat up your vegetables, and you think of these poor, tired-looking things in a bowl like this. They're barely steaming on the top. And, and, and the, if they had faces at all, they would look like this. They'd say, oh, God, you know, there's nothing. You know, it's just tired and pallid and everything else. But it doesn't have to be like that. You see, I think that you can steam a vegetable with fresh herbs added all over them. Just the, um, and, and choose a herb that goes with the vegetable perfectly. And then season them. Spike it a little bit. Throw seasonings like fresh cracked pepper in as well. And before you know where you are, the whole vegetable dish is alive and saying, you know, with vitality, having fun. Well, now, that's what this program's all about. How to take vegetables that could have terrorized you and turn them into something that you can't wait to have a go at. You ready for it? Come on, let's have a go. <laughs> Of course, for this, you're going to have to have some form of steaming device, and that's really important. And I'll, I'll show you a couple of, you know, great ones that are available at the moment. Okay, first things first, then. Um, on here, I've just got a shallow pan, and this is one of those devices that you can get quite inexpensively. They come from Asia, and it's all right, I haven't lost my marbles, you know. They, they, this, is, this is, you put marbles in the bottom of the container in which you put water for steaming. And if you do that, you can put about an inch of water in there, and if it should by chance boil down, you know, almost away, then these marbles, a tremendous racket inside the pan, and they'll let you know. Okay, now, the way this works is that there's just a large outside skillet, and then this is made out of bamboo, and you place that in there, just like that, all right? Place a lid on the top and help that water be able to come to the boil. Good. Now, the, the thing that, um, about stack and steam is you need various layers so that you've got those things which are hard to cook go on the bottom, and those things which are softer to cook and take less time keep on going up. I mean, you know, I, I suppose you could go this way. You can't go that high because the steam doesn't sort of generate enough to be able to cook things on the top. But you can go at least two or maybe even three levels. So this is just two level one. Um, I'm taking what I would like to introduce you uh, uh, to as the absolute king of the roots. Now, here are, are two root vegetables, and they are, you know, you look at it and they say, well, they're not the same, are they? But they're called by the same title, basically. They're called sweet potatoes. This one, because of its orange color, has a tendency to be called a yam, and this one, of course, is just a regular sweet potato. And this one has 10,000 international units of vitamin A when it's raw, okay? And this one has 600. So, you see, there's a real difference between that when you're looking for it. Now, now, now both are high and both are good, and they get vitamin C and calcium and, uh, and beta-carotene and really great stuff. But this is the one that I like to use at the moment because it's got color as well as all that nutrient. So, um, choose one of these. If you've never had one, just cut these at about half-inch slices through. Um, 
they're sort of, you know, I'd love, to, I don't know whether you do this sort of thing personally, but do, do you ever go to a lake and skip stones, or did you ever do that as a child? These would be smashing for that, you know, because they just fit the thing, and you'd just be able to get about a number 32 out of it. I don't know. Pe write to me. Tell me if you ever got over 32 skips. That was the greatest number I ever got. Anyway, so water's boiling, and then just drop those down um, all the way around inside there, and, oh, look, they just fit. And this now is the important part, to be able to get some flavouring in this one on each of the levels, because otherwise it is just, in fact, steamed vegetable, which is nice, but this just adds something special to it. This is the radiating lines of joy. And that's, that's a little chopped thyme, and some freshly ground pepper. That's, I hope it's a trademark of mine. I know it is of hundreds of people who love good food, so join us. And just a little tiny drop of salt. Not, not a lot. It really doesn't have to have a lot of salt. There's a lot of salt which stores up within these vegetables, just comes out of the ground, you know, without having to add to it. Okay, so put that on there. Now you're going to need 22 minutes of cooking time altogether for these little fellows. So you just put those on, cook those for 16 minutes. Now, at the end of 16 minutes, they're going to look like this. Then just put these on ahead of time. And this is the other kind of steamer that I'd like to suggest to you. This one is stainless steel and will last forever. So those, if you just poke them just gently, you'll see that they're almost done, but they've just got a lovely little bit of texture to them. You don't want pappy. You want to sort of bite to them. Okay, so now put this on the top. That's the second steamer, perforated, you know, thing on, on top here, so there's to be able to let the steam through. And into that, I'm going to put a couple of tomatoes, show you how those look. Um, the tomato, I think, when you do this, um, please, um, serving tomatoes, it's just a little thing of mine, but take the core out. It's not a nice thing to come up against. Um, it, it's not nasty, but I mean, it's just something that needs to be taken from the tomato. And here, just, just incise the top of the tomato a little bit so as to let the seasoning go down, and put that in. By the way, if you find uh, one about this size, which, uh, which you love the look of, but it is in fact still green, do this with it. And um, take the tomato and put it with the core side down in a bag with a green apple. And if you do that, the ethylene gas from the green apple will come up and will help to ripen the tomato quicker for you, so you can get on with it. All right. Now, a uh, little bit of time again. I wanted to make it easy. You could put fresh basil or basil or oregano in there if you prefer. Lots of different herbs you could try, but always the black pepper and always just a little bit of a touch of salt in the top. Okay? Good. Second one. Now, how about a green vegetable? Because this, this is classic. In fact, it's so, so much of a classic, I put it on the front cover of the book, you know, that covers this series. It's so good. Um, here, then, is, is spinach, all right? Now, you'd buy spinach just like this. You'd, it has, you know, uh, quite heavy stalk ends. And so I would take all those stalk ends off just in, in one fell swoop. And then place the spinach. I, th this has been washed beforehand. But get it under water and, and, and rinse it really well. Keep tossing it around and around and around in the water. And a, a way of checking this, if you've got one of those kind of uh, sinks where you can do it, a, a white sink, you can always check for little bits of, uh, of earth to come out from the bottom. Otherwise, take a bowl, look in there, no earth. Good. Actually, that's the, you'll have to wash it a bit more in order to get it down like that. See? When it's like this, and before you put it into the steamer, freshly grind black pepper on it, a little bit of salt, just a soupçon, and, incredibly, some shaved nutmeg. Just a li little nutmeg shaver here, and shave about a quarter of a teaspoonful of nutmeg into it. And, and when you taste that, it, it has that sort of spiciness to it, which is just gorgeous. Right, when the tomato's been going for three minutes, all right, uh, lift the lid up there, and just put uh, the spinach right over the top. Just stack it over the top there, okay? And, in fact, it, it, you can actually bounce the whole pound of it on the top. If you like, that's just enough. I just want to make sure that it's done when we try it. All right, now, next thing is just the cheese. And this is the big deal. If you go to uh, one of those marvellous 
family restaurants and they say vegetarian plate. By the way, always put a clip or something, um, keep your cheese in a block form and do keep it in a plastic bag. It saves it from getting all sort of dry. Um, it'd be fairly dry anyway, but this is drier still. Um, and, and then on goes the cheese sauce, right? You want your vegetarian dish and cheese plate with, with cheese sauce. And this cheese sauce has to apparently, by the way, this is, um, this is a piece of parmesan. Parm it isn't parmigiano reggiano. You know that because it's got this black plastic shield on the outside that says that it's American. So this is an American copy of the um, Italian parmesan. It's a very good cheese. And, um, and I'm going to get back to what I was saying in just a moment. <laughs> it's a very good cheese. And if you use a little, this is the simplest grating device I know. It's, a, it's called a cheese stroker, at least that's what I call it. And so stroke that out so that you've got just four tablespoons full of cheese. Now you'll have to, I, I, I'm going to estimate that that's just about that for four people. Um, just one tablespoonful per head. Keep that on, <coughs> I'm going to say it's good, great taste. Well, you see, what the trouble is, you've got this incredible looking um, uh, vegetable dish, <laughs> all right? And then this velvety soft cheese stuff is all over the top of it. That adds up. It truly does. I know it tastes delicious, but it adds up. All right, let's have a look at this. Um, what I normally do uh, with the spinach is take the spinach here, and it, it's that quick to do. This is at the end of the 22 minutes. So you just take the spinach, place it into a sieve, and if it's got any surplus water on it at all, you've got to press that out. All right. Keep that there for a moment. And this is what it looks like now. You take, oh, look at that. It's, it's so magnificent. When you actually serve one of these things, it's fabulous. And here, here are the slices uh, of the, oh, look, look. Just one. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm already tasting it in, in my mouth. And then spinach on the side. There, look, look, look at the plateful of it. Tuck the ends in. And then one tablespoonful of cheese, which is amazing how liberal it can look. Right? So that's done, and just a little bit of freshly ground pepper over the whole thing, just to let them know that you've got a pepper mill. <sighs> it's ready. Shall we look at the numbers? Come along. Now, these numbers are really exciting when compared with the one with the cheese sauce. So that, I think that looks pretty good. And, and there's a headiness of the, of the aroma that comes. You see, it sparkles instead of just being all dull, like it could have been. Right, OK, compared then with the cheese sauce one, 106 calories. So you've taken it down, you know, virtually 100. Fat, you 10 from that cheese sauce one, and this is 2 one of which is saturated, six before. So 44% of the calories can actually come from the fat source with a vegetarian dish. Isn't that amazing? Um, this is down to 16%, which is very good. Cholesterol, only four, super. Sodium, 131. You may, uh, there's that little dusting that I gave every now and again. And then the dietary fiber is three. Okay, let's have a look. <laughs> this actually, I have to tell you, is one of the most wonderful things to eat in the whole world. I take just a little bit of, of the tomato and a little bit of that soft, melting portion there. And, oh, God, I've got a spinach leaf. I'm going to have it all together. Ah. <sighs> mm. I look back on my past at all the towering, marvelous creations I've eaten all my life. I didn't know that something like this was there. Oh, it's so good. Please, give it to people you love and like. <laughs> it's very good. Springboard the idea of the stack and steam. See? Okay, now I'll springboard too. Now, and I'll do a dish, but I'll add some fish into that as well and show you how to do one pot, okay, on one element, okay? Just a whole dinner in just one element. Huh? Coming right up. Right, well, now, um, by the way, that, that dish there is, is on the front cover of the book, you know, I mean, look at it, you know, it's, it really is a splendid dish. Right, now, here we go. Uh, 
In the bottom of the pot this time, it's just a slight difference. This is the whole idea of springboarding, so I'll show you the technique and then the difference. Now here, rolling around, is the, is the skin of one lemon and four um, sage leaves. This is a little somewhat wilted now, but there's a sage leaf and a bay leaf here. And that's it, four sage leaves, one bay leaf and a bit of lemon. And what's happening already is that it's extracted flavor from there. And so when I actually steam something in this, it's really going to sort of um, catch on, you know, with the fish that I'm going to do. Um, when you um, do fish, you can either do it specially, and I'll, I'll do one of those dishes for you sometime, where it drips down into the liquid and then you save the liquid. But in this case, I want to season the fish with the liquid. And so I'm going to place just this in a plate with some lemon slices on top. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. And around the outside of the plate should be enough space for the air to come up, for the steam to come and get to it, all right? Now, um, the next uh, layer, and I might as well do this at the same time, because this actually takes 16 minutes, 13 minutes altogether, right? 13 minutes for the fish to cook. Um, you can actually do a small potato, and these are cut with a little ring around them just to say, to your loved ones, see, you're, you're worth it. You know, just do a little bit of extra tiddly bits. You know. This is for two people, by the way, on one element. Um, so put that on the top too, and that's going to just cook through in the same 13 minute period of time. So that's great. So that we can just leave that on the go and let me show you what I was actually doing. Here is the, um, the fish this time. It's called halibut, and uh, it would come usually in a piece like this if you take it in a whole piece. And when you take in a whole piece, look, please add some certain things about it. One, it should have a lovely uh, either white or black skin to it because it's, um, it, it's a flat fish, so it's, it's black on the top for camouflage purposes and white underneath, you see. Um, but it should be lovely and glossy. And then when you turn it over, you, you, you might just see this here. If I just turn it like that, see how translucent that is? How shiny? Um, it is perfectly fresh. And, and when you've got a little bit of color in it, it's, it's almost like an opal. And when you touch it with your fingers, and it's a bit difficult when you're buying fish, I understand that with the fishman. And you just simply put your fingertips together. If, they, if they're too tacky, you might start to think of uh, uh, going the other way. And, and, uh, and smell it, too. <laughs> I can just see you in a supermarket going through this table. But anyway, please look at it. See how that looks. That's beautiful, fresh fish. All right, so you've got it like that. Get a lemon and, um, and just simply carve off the top and bottom shoulders of the lemon like that. And then take, taking um, a, a sharp knife, a small knife like this, just cut sort of barrel shapes around it. What I'd like to try and do here is to be able to get all of the heavy inside piss and skin out of the way. I've got little bits by the look of it there, but it's going quite well. And then um, cut this in very fine slices. The idea is that we actually want to get a, a kind of garnish going that actually cooks on the fish at the very same time. Okay, so that's done. Um, and then very tiny, hello, <laughs> very tiny thin slices right across and just keep praying as you go through that it's one of those ones without any seeds in it, without any pips. So that, oh, there's a pip. All right, try and get the pips out of the way when you get down to it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, well, that'll cover it. Um, and then just lay that, those overlapping over the top of the fish like that. Oh, nice. And it's a very frail and gentle kind of garnish, but it also seasons the fish at the same time and does without having to sort of um, lace the thing with salt any more than it is already. And uh, so I think that looks pretty good. All right. Now that is how it goes into the pot, and I showed you how that works. Then, um, some vegetables here. This is the courgette, as it's called, or a zucchini, um, trimmed top and bottom, run the knife blade down and through it, and then just halve it once again, just like that. That's ready to go. And some asparagus. Oh, don't you love it when asparagus comes into season? Especially asparagus like this. You see, I, I don't like asparagus where it looks like redwood trees, you know, the, the, the great big fat things, um, uh, unless they come from Belgium cellars. They're quite fun. Um, send, send in a card if you don't know what I'm talking about. I haven't got time. Um, so here is the, the, about the thickness of it, about pencil size, and um, just for two people, just enough to be able to just get the palm of your hand around. Okay. Well, let's look at this. Now, about, uh, when it's had about this amount of time, then just um, raise the lid, 
and pop in the, the two branches of the... And I, I always keep them separate so, so as to um, make sure I've got exactly the right amount, you know, for, for Trina and the right amount for me. Ah, look, put these in, um, green side down, right, like you lay turf, and all done. A little bit of pepper and just, just sprinkled over the top. You'll need about eight minutes on these and a little bit of salt over the top there. Hee, lovely. And smash it on. Gosh, it's just one element, one pot, two people. Great. Sauce. Now, this is what I call a whip. And a whip means that it's a work in progress, and I just thought it would be nice to be able to share something with you as a work in progress just for once. And what this is, is strained yogurt, you know, which is the customary thing that we do with strained yogurt. Just take um, a non-fat yogurt and uh, put it in one of these little uh, strainers here and keep it for about five hours and it goes lovely and smooth like this. Then take just a little, um, just a knife blade and what that means is just the tip of a knife, okay? Just a tip, just about that much, of saffron. Now, I don't like artificial colors. So I color things with things which are real. And so saffron colors that a beautiful buttery, lemony kind of color, doesn't it? It looks like mayonnaise almost. Um, about an, an eighth of a teaspoon, I say to work in progress because we're, we're doing this at the moment. One eighth of a teaspoon. I'm really excited about what this can mean. Um, a, a teaspoonful of maple syrup because of that really acidic taste that you can get sometimes, you know, from, from yogurt. Um, a tablespoonful of parsley, and just a couple of sloshes of Ariel. You see, you can do a couple of sloshes. When you're doing work in progress, you, you, can, you can actually slosh it in. Now, I'd like you to try this and see what you think. If, if you love buttery sauces and mayonnaises and everything else, you may say to yourself, yeah, Graham, you know, a little salt, perhaps, Graham, right? I think that's a little, you know, acidic on the back of the tongue. And I said, fine, well, if, why don't you just use the 2% yogurt and strain that and, you know, creep up on it, all right? Now, that's lovely. That's right. Okay, well, this has still got four minutes to go. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Here, here look. Um, Aerobic exercise, very good, you know, lose weight and everything else like this. Here's a quick one. Stand up. Do this with me. Hands on hips. Ready? Okay, go. Well, hope you followed that, Jane Fonda. <laughs> Gets the old blood going, doesn't it? Marvellous. It runs off about 2,000 carols at the top. Johnny nearly killed me. Right, now, I, I see what happened just as we were running around. Everything came out of the pot. <laughs> just, I can't guarantee that will happen. But here's something I would like you to see. When you actually lift it off, the best way of doing this is just to drop it down like so, so that you can get at the fish easily. It's just a basin and just push it over the top. It really works well. Okay, then the sauce uh, that I'd done... Just a little sauce, I think, should go over in the classical way, uh, just to go over the ends of the asparagus, just like that. All right? And then you can just have a little bit of that. You don't need to smother it. You know, you never smother things in sauce. Right, shall we have a look at the numbers? All right, let's have a go. Now, the numbers in this case, so uh, we'll compare. There's the dish, which actually looks quite elegant, I think, you know, and the fish cooked this way is wonderful. Now, we're comparing this with, uh, with a piece of fish and halibut with a parsley sauce made with a roux in the French style and some French fries on the side, and, you know, it's quite standard, and the same vegetables, so as to give it a, a good shot. Okay, now, here is the number, 877 for the classic, 363 for our little one. Fat was 51 grams of fat, which is almost really enough for one complete day, at least certainly for Trina. Um, two in this case, really good stuff. Saturated fat from 27 down to 1. Um, percentage of calories and fat is 52%. That's down to only 6% of calories. And now you know why people say eat a little fish. Hmm? Um, cholesterol, 74 and sodium 273, not bad at all. Dietary fiber 7, which is jolly D, just up just a little bit. Okay. So, um, very tender, um, perfectly cooked, and uh, 
Just a little bit of that sauce with there. And let's see. Oh, oh that's so good. Try that. One element, one pot, just for two people. Not bad. Okay. Done it a Thanks for being with me. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you next time.